How would I rank all of Frank Ocean's projects? So on one of my videos talking about Frank Ocean announcing that he's releasing a new project through a cryptic message through his blonded merch. By the way, guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Um, we hit 100,000 views. It is, it is crazy. Like, what the heck? <laughs> this video, like, imploded. Um, like, I even know what to say. Thank you so much for everybody that subscribed, that commented, that liked, that watched, took the time to watch the video. It's crazy. Um, I'm really appreciative. And I guess I hope I see some of y'all at Coachella. Um, for week one anyway that being said um josh reiner's 5284 commented on that video specifically asking what are my thoughts on all of frank ocean's official projects and how would i rank them so welcome back to the Kilabin show and today we're ranking frank ocean's projects <laughs> Before I get into ranking his projects, I just want to say that I'm only doing official projects. So Lonely Bro Collection, you know, Undocumented Rare, any other fan made Frank Ocean project is, I'm not touching that um, because it's not his artistical intent. You know, we necessarily don't want these things to be out. So really just doing Nostalgia Ultra, Channel Orange, Endless, Blonde, that's it. So I'll be ranking them, um, you know, from four being the worst, to three, two, and to one. And I'm going to give a little bit of my thoughts throughout the video. And also I'm gonna give you my favorite, three favorite songs on each project and my least favorite song also on each project. So let's begin. At number four, we have Nostalgia Ultra. Now for me, this is the weakest out of all of the four projects, but don't ever get it twisted. Frank Ocean has never missed one day in his career. Um, I believe that for most R&B artists, this would be their best project by far. So when I say it's just my least favorite, it doesn't mean it's bad doesn't mean it's not good if it's your favorite it's amazing it's awesome this is an incredible project okay like i got into frank ocean because of that project because of swim good so don't ever get it twisted incredible project like and Swim good is like one of his best songs ever like i put him in top 10 best songs however the reason why i don't think this is his best project it stems from like i explained on my video on why the eagles want to sue frank ocean make sure to check that video and subscribe to this channel that would be amazing but yeah I explained that, you know, a lot of the songs on the project were not originally his songs. They were from already well-established artists like, you know, MGMT, The Eagles, Mr. Hudson, and Coldplay. So an example would be Strawberry Swing. The beat the instrumental was actually Strawberry Swing from Coldplay. And, you know, Nature Feel is actually the same beat as Electric Feel from MGMT. So he took a lot of, you know, creative liberty, of course, with the lyrics, but most of them the instrumentals are pretty much the same and that's for a lot of songs on the project of course songs like swim good novocaine are originally 100 percent his but a lot of songs are not really and that kind of knocks a project for me just because i want to know who is frank ocean like what does a frank ocean beat sounds like for a whole album you know uh i still like what he did with the songs like I love, you know, I prefer his rendition to Proud Strawberry Swing. I prefer his rendition to Mr. Hudson's There Will Be Tears. I don't prefer um, Nature Feel to Electric Feel. Electric Feel is freaking amazing, but I'm biased. I'm a huge MGMT fan. But yeah, I wanted to see more like who is Frank Ocean? What, like, what type of production would be on a full Frank Ocean project? What would he do with a full length project? How would he tell his stories? How would he make it everything cohesive together? And of course, we didn't get specific. We got some glitz. We had some glimpse of what, you know, who is Frank Ocean with, you know, obviously him putting a lot of cassette sounds, um, video game Street Fighter sounds, songs like Swim Good, you know. And even on There Will Be Tears, the beat is not him, but when he talks about his granddaddy being a player and talking about him, it's interesting. Um, so, yeah. But again, you know, I want something original, you know, like, you know, you, you can sample, you can interpolate, it's okay, but like not taking a whole you know like instrumental of a song i really want something more original but still love the project and i would say my top three songs are swim good the first frank ocean song i ever heard novocaine and love crimes oh my goodness and my least favorite song would be dust at number three blonde i know i'm gonna get murdered for this i know people in the comments are already shut people are just shutting down the video and the comments are saying you're out of you're crazy you're not a true frank ocean fan whatever 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 I have Blonde at third, and I'm going to stick to it, okay? And the reason why is because, again, like for Nostalgia Ultra, for a lot of artists, it would be their greatest album ever. This is one of the greatest albums of the 2010s, okay? If this was a Tyler album, it would be his best album. If this is the Weekend album, it would be his best album. If this is Bryson Tiller's album, it would be his best album, okay? This is a fantastic album, guys. Don't ever get it twisted. It's just that I think that he has two better projects. Um, for me, the songwriting, the production, he's 
sung and the singing he's sung so much better on the other projects that i'm about to name he has had better um production and the songwriting jesus lord and the albums ahead of this one the songwriting is just next level but i still adore this project okay i think that the highs on this album are some of the greatest highs in frank ocean's whole career but there are some duds on this album and i can't lie an example for me would be songs like pink and white and ivy which i I got a lot of hate on TikTok for saying this, but I just think that they sound like your prototypical R&B inspired pop songs. Um, I don't think there's much necessarily going on on these songs, man. The songwriting is a little simple to me. The beats, I just don't think they're just pre like, even though this is a very minimalistic album, okay? And you know, due to being minimalistic, there's a lot of songs where he sings great, but like the singing for me is pretty okay. Um, and you know, the instrumentals, I just, you know, I just don't think they're that amazing. I still love the two songs, but I don't think they're that amazing. That being said, there's still songs I love, like Nikes, like Frank Ocean went, disappeared for four years. And on the first song of his new album, it's not even his voice. It's his voice pitched up. And then all of a sudden the song just, the beat drops and you hear his voice. I'll let you guys prophesy. Like, wh like what the heck? Like this, dude, like the release, like I don't like, I think it was a genius move for him to do that on Nike's. People don't like his high pitched voice on Nike's. I adore it, first of all, and I adore the fact that there's a duality, you know? His voice is pitched, and then, and he, Frank Ocean has a pretty damn deep voice, and then his voice is back to normal, and just that, 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 that shift is such a release. It's beautiful. Like that is artistically just genius from Frank Ocean. I'm sorry, I have to say it. It's beautiful. And it, it shows again the duality of blonde, blonde with the E, blonde without the E. I think that Nike shows that duality. It is beautiful. Like like the song completely shifts. Kind of like you know, nights the song shifts on Nike's when his voice changes, it just shifts completely. And and that's not it. You know, the singing on self-control is oh my goodness, that I I I like what you know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, bro. Next level. And I talked about it. The beat switch on nights, just dividing the album into two and shifting both parts of the album showing again that duality the production is crazy on that song the singing is beautiful um and i like the fact that he says you know buku coming from you know um the word buku in french a lot going back to you know maybe haitian heritage new orleans heritage um the fact that you know new orleans used to be you know uh louisiana used to be a territory from you know from the french it was a french colony and just coming back with that culture you know um just showing a little bit of his culture i like that a lot and also the, just a three track run you know what I'm talking about. White Ferrari to Godspeed. That might be the most melancholic three track run in music history. Oh my goodness. I even like Facebook story. I think it's just a beautiful song and it's a critique of, you know, modern society. Like, why did you add me on Facebook? Like I'm in front of you. Like life doesn't happen on the internet. That's not real face to face, you know, being with people that's real. Like I even think that's genius, bro. And future of free man, um, where he opens up about, you know, tired of sleeping on his couch just fight with chris brown and all, stuff like that and the moment with ryan bro at the end of the album and the end of the song future free it's just beautiful you know but still i feel like ah, on this project like i said the songwriting i don't think it's as amazing like he i feel like he doesn't talk about like it there was a four-year hiatus bro i don't feel like he talks about his life enough you know we don't get to see who's frank ocean as much as i would have loved to we do hear see like i said on future free a bit um nights you know some songs here and there but not enough and then i feel like people just stay stuck on songs like pink and white and ivy when it gets to the album it's like the only songs they know and deeper cuts are so much better yeah i just wanted more um i still think it's one of the greatest albums ever made it's amazing but yeah, I still think that there's two projects ahead of this one. And I would say that my top three songs are obviously White Ferrari, Oh My Goodness, Self Control, and um, Future Free. And my least favorite would be Solo. Um, solo, Solo Reprise with Andre 1000. I just, I don't vibe with the songs as much as I do with the other ones. But yeah, I would say Solo is my least favorite. At number two, Endless. And I know people in the comments are already, they already shut off the view, you saw the video. They already shut off your video. They don't want to know what I'm trying to say about Endless. They don't care. They don't care. I, people sleep on Endless. It might be, it is. I think it's the most underrated project of the 2010s. It's the most underrated Frank Ocean project. That project is so beautiful. It is actually ridiculous. The way he opens it up with At Your Best, You Are Love. I know it's not his song. I know I knock on Nostalgia Ultra because a lot of it's not his songs, you know, but the singing, bro. When he says, tell me what it is, like that part you know what i'm talking about what the hell 
amazing. That project literally has some of Frank Ocean's best singing and the storytelling is good. And we get to see a little bit about Frank Ocean's life, even when it's his youth. I'm talking about UNITY, Unity. When he says Iberville 1995, you thought there was airstrikes going outside Iberville, you know, project neighborhood in New Orleans. He's talking about what, how it got real over there, bro. That's his past. Like, that's amazing to hear. Songs like Come the Garçon, I like boys, you know, like Frank Ocean likes men you know bisexuality duality all that stuff songs like that like that little play on words talking about himself is super interesting and even though i don't like device control that's pretty much the only song i don't like i think it's amazing slide on me is beautiful um in here somewhere with jasmine sullivan is incredible with the daft punk beats daft punk sample oh my goodness and rushes one and two with the stripped back nature, with just the guitar, like this is ambiance music at a T. You listen to his songs and you lose yourself, man. And the songwriting is just beautiful, man, you know? And I mean, some corny lyrics like, two nuts weigh two pounds on, on your bench like futons. Like, oh, that verse is what? But it's 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 a really good project, honestly. They're like, the song, the songwriting is good. It's just that, like, that bar is ridiculous. But what a project, honestly. You know, people love the melancholic nature of, you know, Blonde, he cried us out to sleep at 3 a.m. listening to Blonde. But that three track one I talk about, you know, White Ferrari, Godspeed, um, you know, Siegfried, guys, that. That's basically endless. Like, that's how endless sounds. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. And songs like Alabama, where, you know, he talks about really his life, man. Like, it's just so much more. This project is so much more personal, I feel like. Like, Blonde, it's, it's like a more coming of age story and of, you know, reminiscing for the past also a little bit, you know, because he's maturing. He's right, he can't go back to that past. But I feel like it's, it's, it's I think it's more relatable because if I go to this and talk about his life as much, so like, you know, a lot of people relate to it because it's more like a little more surface level while Endless really gets deep, bro. It's, it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful project. And my favorite songs are obviously, you know, Rushes, At Your Best, and In Here Somewhere. And my least favorite is obviously The Vice Control, I'm Sorry, Wolfgang Tillmans. And at number one, Channel Orange. This is one of the greatest albums of this millennia. It has the greatest song of the 2010s. This is a debut album. What the hell? How do you start your career, your studio, your debut, your freshman project with an album like this? I it's it's for me it's unheard of it's next level man this is michael jackson thriller this is amazing the storytelling is next level there's colors there's vibrance there's so many different stars from frank ocean talking about his granddad you know back in the day on crack rock and talking about how crack destroyed a generation from pyramids you know talking about the black woman a black queen in africa and moved to america it's now nothing more than a stripper from you know bad religion talking about unrequited love and talking about the fear of his sexuality in terms of his religion man will he be accepted you know for loving who he loves being another man thinking about you where everybody and their moms thought he was talking about a woman he was talking about a man like oh my goodness this is there's so much on this album there's something for everybody on this album it's amazing there's, it's so vibrant there's so many different stories like how many stories do you have dude it's ridiculous to me bro and even pyramids bro like pyramids it's divided into two and the first part it's groovy you know dun, dun, we're in africa everything is beautiful you know and the beat the drums are reversed because we're in the past and in the present in america it's stripped down it's more depressive we're not kings and queens anymore or pimps and strippers man and the drums are back to normal bro like like just with the instrumental he's telling you a story what the heck frank what the heck like this is one of the greatest albums ever made man and pyramids is the greatest song of the 2010s and if i had to give my favorite songs of course pyramids after that crack rock and lost man oh my goodness and this is when i say this um i've been listening to lost since 2012 so all that tiktok nonsense that lost me no, I've been a fan of song for a very long time. Trust. And the worst song on that project, there isn't one. He didn't miss once on that project. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know um, what is your favorite Frank Ocean project and what's your favorite track and what is... Well, I actually made a video about uh, <laughs> the worst Frank Ocean track. That, I don't know. That video is doing super well. People are really... like. It's really interesting to see what people hate as a Frank Ocean track. It's, it's, some people have a hard time, but you know, it's, it's interesting. I might read some comments one day if you, if you want. Let me know in the comments. And yeah, subscribe, like, hit the bell notification, guys. And as usual, keep it supreme.